Jingle All the Way was released in 1996 and was directed by Brian Levant and stars Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sinbad, Phil Hartman, Rita Wilson, and Jake Lloyd, and follows a father who vows to get his son a Turbo Man action figure for Christmas. However, every store is sold out and he must travel all over town and compete with everybody else in order to find one. Welcome back everyone. I know it's been a while since I last posted a review here and a lot of that can be explained very simply with good old fashioned burnout. I originally planned to do an entire month of Christmas related movie reviews but decided to step back some just to rejuvenate myself a bit. So I apologize but I still wanted to at least do one review for Christmas and why not talk about a film that was a huge part of my childhood, Jingle All The Way. A film that was maligned when it first came out, but has finally received a cult following as an important film that recognizes the commercialization of Christmas, and I'm happy to finally talk about it here. But before we get into that, let's do what we always do here and go behind the scenes to see just how this film was made. Jingle All the Way draws inspiration from the high demand for Christmas toys, such as the Cabbage Patch Kids and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers during the late 80s and early 90s. Oftentimes, these high demands would lead to intense searching and violence among shoppers, such as the Cabbage Patch Riots, where many customers attacked each other with baseball bats in order to purchase Cabbage Patch dolls. Randy Cornfield would end up writing the original screenplay for the film, being inspired by these events, as well as witnessing firsthand his in-laws going to a Santa Monica toy store at dawn in order to get a Power Rangers action figure. Producer Chris Columbus also noted he had a similar experience in 1995 trying to get a Buzz Lightyear from the new Toy Story. After this experience, he ended up rewriting Randy Cornfield's script and added elements to the film that would satirize the commercialization of the holiday. Afterwards, the script would finally be accepted at 20th Century Fox. Brian Levant was hired as director for the film since Columbus believed he understood the humor in the material. Levant also looked at the film as the story of a father's love for his son and enjoyed many aspects of the creative process, such as creating his own toy line and filming the commercials. And at its heart, he wanted the film to be about family and building it stronger. Arnold Schwarzenegger was quickly cast as the lead for the film after becoming available when the Planet of the Apes remake was held up again. Columbus was even attached to that project and left to work closely on Jingle All the Way. Schwarzenegger was also excited to play an ordinary character in the film. Joe Pesci was initially the choice for the mailman Myron, but Sinbad was chosen instead, in part to his similar height to Schwarzenegger. There was also fear of him taking on this role over the fear that it might ruin his reputation as a clean, family-oriented comedy act. But Sinbad felt that he could get audiences to sympathize with the character. Filming started on April 15th of 1996 in Minnesota and lasted for five weeks and at the time it was the largest film production to take place in the state. And the filming locations included the Twin Cities metropolitan area as well as Bloomington's Mall of America. Levant often found shooting impossible due to the scale and noise of the crowds who came to watch the production. This was especially so in the Mall of America sequence. The parade for the film was shot at Universal Studios Hollywood in California on the New York Street set due to safety concerns. It took three weeks to film the scene with 1,500 extras being used. Turbo Man toys, costumes, and commercials also had to be worked on for the film, and the design of Turbo Man was worked on by Levant and Columbus, as well as production designer Leslie McDonald and character designer Tim Flattery. After shooting was complete, Columbus stayed deeply involved with multiple test screenings to see where the film's big laughs were. 
The movie was finally released worldwide on November 22nd, 1996, and on a budget of $75 million, it grossed $129 million, making it a mild hit at the time. On the critical side, the film received mostly negative reviews, being seen as a highly formulaic film, and the film failed in its attempts at satire. However, there were also those that found the ideas in the film mostly enjoyable, and since its release, has had more popularity as maybe not a classic, but a film to definitely watch during the Christmas season. Now with all that out of the way, let's go into my thoughts on the film. Honestly, I don't know how I would feel about this movie if it wasn't something I grew up with. This is not a beloved movie, especially by critics, and only recently has it gained more traction as a classic Christmas movie, mostly by those who watched it when they were young like myself. So I'm going into this review already being pretty biased, but I also can't deny that there's some things in this movie especially with its ideas that are truly clever, and I think it ends up being a pretty fun satire despite being a flawed film. But it's still one I have fond memories of watching as a kid, and I always watch it around this time of year, and would even rank it among one of my favorite Christmas movies. Let's start by talking about the big message of the film and what it's trying to satirize. Jingle All the Way is this comedic look at the absurdity of the holiday, especially when it comes to searching for that one gift that everyone is looking for. This is something that is even relevant to today, and it's something that happens all year round now, instead of just at Christmas time. Look at game consoles especially. It was so hard finding a PS5 in the first year or two of its life cycle. The same with the Nintendo Wii when it came out as well. And this film reminds me especially of how Black Friday used to be with thousands of people crowded around in the early morning waiting for the stores to open and then absolutely going wild and losing all sense of decency. I think this film captures that wonderfully and manages to poke fun at the absurdity of it all in a funny but not always clever way. We have our lead, Howard, rushing from department stores and toy shops, fighting against other customers, chasing after numbered balls to be called on to win a Turbo Man action figure, and even resorting to purchasing a toy through an illegal operation. The links Howard goes to to get this one toy are so absurd, so outlandish, and the comedy just really lands for me. And I'm not going to sit here and say this is a comedic masterpiece. Many of the jokes really aren't anything special, but the jokes fit well with the premise of the film and they support that overall. I also love how they capture the spirit of the hot new toy. You have this Turbo Man figure, which is from this TV show and movie that's reminiscent of Power Rangers, and the show we see that opens the film is just perfect at capturing that kind of product. It feels like Power Rangers and feels like exactly what it's satirizing. I also love that they focus on one of my favorite small jokes in the film, that being they don't have any Turbo Man action figures anywhere, but they have plenty of his sidekick, and that's because he's simply not in demand and nobody wants him, and there's all... And there's a really funny moment near the end of the movie during the parade where the guy dressed up as the character in the costume falls down and kids just run over and kick him and telling him how much he sucks. As for other messages that the film deals with, I don't think they handle them as well, such as the dynamic between a father and son, the love for one's family, and trying to provide the perfect Christmas. I think the problem lies in the movie being very materialistic for a majority of the runtime. Everything is about how characters wish they could have gotten that one toy, such as Myron, who never got the perfect toy he was looking for. And it's the only way Howard can seem to show his love in the film. And that kind of sucks and feels kind of mean. And I think at the end of the movie, when Howard's son Jamie learns he doesn't need the Turbo Man action figure after all, because his dad is the hero in the end, is a sweet 
moment, but it honestly can fall flat at the end because I don't think the message they were trying to present was ever all that clear. As for things that work in the film very well are the performances. I honestly love when Arnold Schwarzenegger plays against type and stars in a random comedy where he's just out of his wheelhouse because that in and of itself is funny. Watching him being a businessman and a good father and Schwarzenegger's delivery of some of the movie's lines are just hilarious because for one, he's not the best actor in the world, so lines can sound very strange at times, but that's kind of what makes it work, and I think he's really good acting besides Sinbad, who plays the mailman Myron, who is probably the best character in the film. His delivery is great, his lines are freaking hilarious, and acting opposite of Schwarzenegger, they're just a really good matchup. I love how Myron has to get into these very violent moods as he gets worked up going on some tirade. And my favorite moment with him is when he pretends to be carrying a bomb from the mail and the police come in and believe it to be fake only for them all to discover and even Myron himself discovering the bomb to be real. And all he can say is, it was a real bomb. This is a sick world. He's also just a fun villain by the end, willing to go to extreme measures just to please his own son. But my favorite character and performance in the whole film has to be Phil Hartman as Ted, who is Howard's neighbor, a recent divorcee, and he has all the women after him with his sights set on Howard's wife, Liz. This character is sleazy and charming and kind of a creep, and Phil Hartman has so much fun with this role as he tries to compete with Howard and even shoves it in his face, and he thinks he's a better father than Howard is. That rivalry is great, and his character really went over my head when I was little. But the film is populated with other small yet memorable performances, such as Robert Conrad as Officer Hummel, who is all part of this continuing joke through the film where Howard always seems to get mixed up with him, whether it's in the beginning getting a speeding ticket or hitting his police motorcycle or burning his hands and so on. It's a really funny reoccurring gag. But my favorite side character is actually Jim Belushi and perhaps his finest performance as a mall Santa that sells bootleg toys to people and takes their money. And there's a great scene where he takes Howard to his shop that's filled with men dressed up as Santas that's then busted by the police. The set pieces are just great in this movie. Every scene is an event from the department stores to the Mall of America scene where Howard is trying to get this number ball from this child only to be beaten up by a bunch of protective mothers. But the real star of the film is the big bombastic third act and this set piece is just incredible. I feel like most comedy films don't go this big, but this movie decides to have its big climax at a parade with hundreds of extras. You have elaborate floats and costumes and it all ends with Howard being placed in the Turbo Man suit and being part of the parade by accident. And he has to save his son, Jamie, who's being chased by Myron. It's big and just cool to see because this just feels like something that's usually not done for this kind of movie. The only part that brings it down some is the dated effects during the flying scenes but there's a charm found in those kinds of dated effects that I don't really have a problem with. I think Jingle All the Way is a flawed film that has some of the absolute best ideas but fails in the execution of its main message. There's one part in particular that leads to the low point of the film and it starts off as a joke that leads to something serious. Jamie tells his friend that his dad is so cool and his friend replies that Ted didn't always used to be this, not until his parents got divorced and then he proceeds to tell Jamie maybe his parents should get a divorce and the same thing will happen to him and I just think that's a horrible thing to say in a film that's more or less a children's film at its core. That's probably my biggest complaint with the film. Jingle All the Way is far from a perfect film, but it is one that 
I'm constantly going back to year after year and has become a bit of a Christmas tradition. And probably some of that is seeing it at such a young age that my nostalgia for it can kind of cloud some of my judgment. But the film isn't perfect either. The message and the emotional payoff of the film falls flat for me, but I'm still left with a film that is really funny and has some fun performances, whether it's Arnold or Sinbad or Phil Hartman and others. So if you haven't seen Jingle All The Way, I say check it out, especially for its commentary on the holiday. It might not sway you, but I still think it's a good movie in the end, and I think it has actually improved with age. And with all that said, I'm going to give Jingle All The Way a 7 out of 10. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. This was a lot of fun revisiting one of my favorite childhood films, and it was the perfect choice for talking about around this time of year. If you've seen Jingle All The Way, what do you think about it? I'm looking forward to the coming year where we'll be continuing our Disney reviews, finishing up the Fantastic Beasts films, and many more reviews along the way. So, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to you all, and as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and stay positive.